morning, I'm going to read from Psalms 33. Blessed is the nation who, whose God is Lord, and people he choose for his inheritance. From heaven the Lord looks down, he sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of all, who considers everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse in vain hopes for deliverance. Despite all the great strength, he cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. We wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice. For him we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. There I screwed up. I went out of order. So the only announcements I have for the board meeting order is next week on Wednesday. Other than that, I think that's our only announcement. Other than that, if you want to listen to our prayer read, it's the girls like the candles. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us faithfully here today. May we open our hearts and our minds to worshiping you, a true worship that truly glorifies you and your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in heavens that does not fall, fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. As we come into this time of prayer this morning, I think it's important that we, that we understand what it, exactly it is that we are praying for. We don't want to pray for those earthly things that, that will um, disappoint us in the long run. Um, it was the, the lottery there a couple weeks ago it was over a million dollars. And yeah, that'd be nice to have if we were able to do good things with it. But eventually, those things are going to disappoint us. They're going to fall short. What our ultimate prayer should be is to receive the kingdom of God, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ, and, and, and the love that God had for us. And he showed that love through his one and only son, as my grace that says. Let us come into our time of, of prayer by singing our prayer hymn, number 425. Five seven six. I was on the next page. Sorry about that. Five five seven six. six.
And as we come into our time of prayer, I, I, I invite you to do so in a moment of quiet meditation, allowing him to come into your heart, lifting up to him your hopes, your fears, your joys, your sorrows, all those things that, that make us human, that make us one with him. But we were made in his, his life. And so let us come to him now in a moment of quiet meditation. Hey, these are prayers, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for calling to us, to, to inviting us to this time of worship. We ask that you would continue to bless us in this time, even when we don't always worship in a way that, that does bring glory and honor to you. We just ask that you would forgive us for our shortcomings and worship and in our daily lives, that you would stand firmly with us. Even when we fall, may you catch us. Even when we stumble, may you straighten us. Heavenly Father, when we say the wrong words, when we think the wrong thoughts, forgive us and grant your Holy Spirit upon us that we may, that we may serve you, our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those that we that we have mentioned. We lift up to you family and friends who, who may be suffering some quietly, some seemingly alone, but let them know they are alone. Let them know that there is your son up above, that, that we too are a conduit for your spirit to them. May they feel your presence as, as we would minister to them the way you would want us to. We would ask that you would be with all who are ill, we thank you for the healing that we have witnessed in our lives, and we just ask that you would be with the doctors and nurses, that, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them patience, strength. And again, we thank you for, for the ministry, for, for the miracles that we are to witness in our lives, the miracles of healing. But most of all, we thank you that no matter what we are allowed, to be made whole with you someday in that heavenly kingdom. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the birthdays that we celebrate. We thank you that we have witnessed such a strong ministry and such a, such a young and strong young lady, and we ask that you would continue to bless her many days, many, many months, many years with the ministry to you and to your kingdom. We thank you for family, not only the family of those here that are brothers and sisters in Christ, the family of, of brothers and sisters that are meeting in other churches around the, around the community and, and around the state and around the world, but we thank you for that blood family, and we thank you for the ties that bind us all one to another. In everything, Father, we give you the glory honor and we thank you for the joys in our lives even when we fail to do so and when we witness them in all things father thank you for the holy spirit given freely to us by your son jesus christ in his name we pray amen, amen.
and I also wanted to raise up uh, Deb Lewis in prayer. She is traveling this weekend. Her mother is going through some medical tests, and she is spending a couple weeks, I believe, with her. So um, let us keep her in prayer as well. As we come into our time of, of communion, I would like to uh, continue to read on from Luke chapter 12. Stay, de- stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for the master to come home from the wedding feast. So they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table. And he will come and serve them. If he comes in in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming an hour you do not expect. I, I like that pa- passage, and it goes with one of my favorite passages with, from Revelations when when we see that Jesus comes to the door and knocks, and those who answer, he will sup with them and, and they with him. Um, I, I, I told you, well, I, I shared with you um, that in the past, my, my mentor, when I was going through the licensed ministry program, he equated heaven to a wedding feast. And, and we see that over and over. Jesus talks about the wedding feast in, in different parables throughout the Gospels. But he said, Doug, whenever you go to that wedding feast, there's nothing that says wedding like a wedding feast. He said, you got stale beer, you got sheet cake that is oftentimes stale. He goes, you got music that the young kids can dance to, but I don't really understand, but I get out and dance anyway, because hey, it's a wedding feast. That's what heaven is all about is is a time to be joyous a time to to gather together and be family to be joyful for one another that is what the communion table is all about we are invited not by me not by the elders but we are invited by christ himself to come in and participate in this joyful time of celebration with him that's what the table is, a celebration, a celebration of life. Yes, we remember that he went to the, to the cross, but he went to the cross so that we may live. Let us come to our time of communion by singing, let us break bread together, number 425. <coughs>
trade. Took a loaf of bread and on giving thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take, eat this bread in remembrance of me. Same way, he said, in the same way, he took the cup after saying, saying thanks after supper. He said, this, this cup is the blood of my new covenant. This is the new covenant into my brush. Do this in remembrance of me. And for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of Jesus until he comes. God, you have provided us with what we need, but we so often hunger for that which we do not nourish, that which does not fulfill our deepest needs. Help us to accept the words of Jesus when he said, Do not labor for that which perishes, but for the food that which endures to the eternal life. When we hear this invitation, let us accept the claim that Jesus is the bread of life and find him in the nourishment we need. Thank you for this bread we now eat and the relationship it symbolizes. Amen. Please take the bread and break it as it is. Dear Heavenly Father, with grateful hearts, O oh God, we remember the gift of your love in Jesus Christ, who for our sakes was broken, that we may be made whole. Bind us together in Christian love, and grant that Christ may be made known in the new way to us in the breaking of bread and the drinking of this wine. Empower us with your spirit, so that we are strengthened to share this with the world. Amen. Let's take of the cup together. receive in the, in the manner that they are given, that they are given in a way that, that would honor and glorify you. Heavenly Father, may they be used to further your kingdom here on earth, that all would know of you and your son and the grace provided to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. asked a couple of weeks ago about the dog days of heaven. I don't even know who asked her dog days of summer, not, not heaven. I'm sorry. But I, um, the question is, it was asked, uh, are, we, are we in the dog days of heaven? Or <laughs> are we in the dog days of summer? And, and, and you always hear about those, you know, as, as a baseball fan, you always hear about the dog days of summer, ever since I was a little kid. 
And, and of course, it's, it's nothing based on fact, it's only opinion, but yes, I do believe we are in the dog days of summer. That it gets hot and it stays hot and, and it just doesn't seem to be any relief. Um, the routine gets a little bit, you know, we're ready for a change of seasons. You look at the grass, which is brown everywhere and not green. And if you do see green grass, it, it looks almost out of place and unnatural because you know it's been irrigated by somebody just to keep it green. And, and as somebody who plants trees, you go by trees that you've planted and you just pray that they're still alive because they're either going to be watered not enough or they're going to be watered too much. And, and yes, water, trees can be watered too much. Take it from somebody who has watched them drown. So, anyhow. <coughs> Another way, I, I know it's the dog days of summer is as we start to get in to, uh, well, actually it starts in Pentecost. We have this alternate reading of the Old Testament stories. It, it, it's also called um, uh, the semi-continuous readings. And, and a lot of times they'll go um, through some of the history books, um, First and Second Kings, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Current uh, Chronicles, but they also hit a lot of the prophets, and they do a lot of the minor prophets. And this week they happen to go back to Isaiah, who's not a, a, a minor prophet at all. He's a major prophet, one, one of the biggies of the Old Testament. And and we do have Isaiah in, in, in other times in the lectionary, but but those are usually from. From second and third Isaiah, but very rarely are they from first Isaiah. First Isaiah runs through that first half of Isaiah. The, the second Isaiah is in the middle, and then that third Isaiah is at the very end. Most critical Bible readers, most critical Christians will read Isaiah and say there's actually three different authors and not one. Um, there are some people who still claim to be one, but over the time, the timeline just can't fit that there would be just this one. This week, then, we read from 1st Isaiah, the, the chapter 1 of Isaiah. That's about as first as you can get, chapter 1, verse 9. And, and, and I had every intention to read from the Luke and passage this week. Every intention. And then last night, about 10 o'clock at night, I realized I haven't read Luke at all this week, but I've been reading from Isaiah all week. When, when I get up and do my little study in the morning, instead of going to the Luke passage, I was stuck in Isaiah. And then about Friday, I started reading the commentaries from, from Isaiah. And, and, and it, it, it's, this is a passage that has always grabbed me grab me by the throat as a Christian, as a pastor, and kind of just slap me upside the head. All the other passages, all the other readings have something to do with each other. And this week, we can tell by the hymns that Ruth has picked out, which are beautiful hymns, they all have to deal with faith. But this is something, the alternative reading seldom has anything to do with the other readings. But in a way, this week's passage did. Now, the reading, the verses they have us reading for the lectionary are verses 1 and then 10 through 20. Um, I invite you this week, those are the passages that I'm going to read, but I invite you this week to, to read verses 2 through 9. Because they really open up what Isaiah, it's all part of this poem that starts at the very beginning of Isaiah. And it's something that we need to hear as Christians. That we need to hear as, as, as people of God. I am going to add a little bit of verse 2, just the first part of verse 2. Isaiah chapter 1. And I just read um, my message titled, it should read, Do You Hear What I Hear? And do you, not, Do You Heart What I Hear? Do You Hear What I Hear? Isaiah chapter 1. 
The visions of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Going down to verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teachings of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What, what to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I have had enough of your burnt offerings of rams, of the fat and well-fed beast. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or the lambs of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required of you these trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings, incense is an abomination to me, new moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations. I cannot endure inequity in solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers. I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. You wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless and plead the widow's cause. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though the sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And may God bless the reading of the word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I do ask that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, would be true to you, my Lord, my Savior. Amen. So this is an indictment of Judah and Jerusalem. We, we have to understand who are the original listeners to this writing. To, who are the people who would, would have heard these words first? It would have been those people in Jerusalem. It wouldn't have been Sodom and Gomorrah. We, we, we talked about Sodom and Gomorrah last week, that, that Sodom and Gomorrah Christians in medieval times on, even, even in modern day, have, have this misunderstanding of why Sodom and Gomorrah was punished. But if we read the Bible from Amos, from Ezekiel, from all the others, we see that, that Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't punished for some sexual misdoing, but it was actually because they were not hospitable to the foreigners. They were not hospitable to their own people. They show no hospitality. And Ezekiel it says, you had wealth beyond compare. You, you, this didn't satisfy you. Ezekiel chapter 16, read it sometime. But Isaiah wasn't commenting to those people in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was talking to the people in Jerusalem. And you have to understand what had happened in Jerusalem up, up until this time. This was about 750 B.C. The northern kingdom of Israel had already fallen about 100 to 150 years prior to this date. And this is all historical fact. It's not just in our Bible, but it's, it's in other writings as well. The northern kingdom had fallen to the Assyrians, who would be conquered by the Babylonians, and now the Babylonians were after Jerusalem. They had come and, and conquered Judah. They had, they had slaughtered the countryside. It was a brutal war. And they were knocking on the door of, of Jerusalem when first Isaiah was written. And now, Isaiah was telling the people why. 
why had this happened to me? Because you weren't looking out for God's people. Yes, you were you were obeying the laws that were laid out in the Torah in, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. You you were worshiping in, in a way that those practices were, were were meant to be the new moons. And yet you were not worshiping me. For you are not taking care of my people. You're not taking care of those who, who were made in my own image. I I, I look and I want and, and this I don't mean to be an indictment on anybody's faith or in anybody the way they worship. But sometimes we have glitz and glamour in our worship service, and that's all it is. People complain that we don't have old music. People complain that we don't have contemporary music. People are here for, for the entertainment. But where is the worship? Where is their heart? Is it truly set on God? Does it matter that we meet in, in the sanctuary at all? Does it matter that we were to meet in somebody's home? Does it matter? We don't take care of those that we are in charge of. And who are we in charge of? I've told this in Bible study, I've told this from the pulpit, I've told this many times. The reason why Jerusalem, why Judah, why Israel was punished, why their kingdom was taken away, is because they would not take care of the orphans the widows and the sword sojourners. Those that are most vulnerable in the society, they turn their backs on. Those that needed the help the most in a society that did not have any social networking at all, those are the people that they were to take care of. The religious and the political people of, of those kingdoms refused to take care of God's people. That's why they were punished. That's why their kingdom went away. And if you look at civilizations, my, my, my daughter turned me on to the, the fall of civilization, and there, there's all sorts of civilizations dating back prior, even, even to some of the Jewish kingdoms that we, that we mentioned. And it all comes down to the same thing. People forget to take care of the need. We can't do that as brothers and sisters in Christ. We must stand up for those in need. I couldn't get away from this passage this week. I look at my own worship, my own spiritual life, I look at the spiritual life. You guys do great work. I'm not. I'm not doubting that at all. With with all the ministry that you have, with with the resources that we have, I, you guys do wonderful. But where are we as church, Big C, not this congregation, Big C? Where are we? Are we truly, truly in this country? looking out for those on the edges, the vulnerable. I pray that we will. I pray that as we as a country, that we as Christians will wake up and follow God's lead. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you, you have provided us a word of hope. We just ask that we would be able to worship you truly with, with our hearts, with our actions. That this day we could bring the salvation message of your son, Jesus Christ, which is the most important message in the Bible. For you so loved the world that you gave your one and only son that all who believe in him shall live. Let us, let us live into this ministry. 
In his name we pray, amen. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me in 529.